Hey, what did you do for Al Quds Day? Right? Uh, Al Quds, uh, that is the Muslim word for Jerusalem because Jerusalem doesn't exist. It's Al Quds, of course. Uh, and so they were celebrating uh, Al Quds in Dearborn, Michigan. And uh, oh, what a celebration it was. Do we have, can you pull this up a little bit? Why are our protests on the International Day of Quds? This Why is Dearborn, so Michigan. Anti-America? Why so anti-America? Why don't we just focus more on Israel and not talk so much about America? Yeah, amen. Gaza has shown the entire world why these protests are so anti-America. Mm -hmm. Because it's the United States government that provides the funds for all of the atrocities that we just heard about. Mm -hmm. And this is why Imam Khomeini, who declared the International Day of Quds, mm -hmm. this is why he would say to pour all of, your all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Mm -hmm. Death to America. Death to America. Death to America. Malcolm X said, and I quote, mm. we live in one of the rottenest countries that, have ever, that has ever existed on this earth. It's not genocide Joe that has to go. It's the entire system that has to go. Any system that would allow such atrocities and such devilry to, a ha to happen and would support it, such a system does not deserve to exist on God's earth. Amen. Now, I, you know, <laughs> you might quibble. We might quibble a bit on certain things like death to America. But uh, I just wanted to play that because this is what was happening in Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, by the way, in unrelated news, that great grandmother, 71 years old, that walked into an open door in the Capitol, they busted her finally. Finally. Oh, good. Uh, she's been convicted. She's going to jail. We don't know. You know, we don't know how strong. I hope. I hope it's ten years for parading, but That's they it? got her over the weekend. This guy, anyway. Uh, back to the real story. Um, this guy is uh, chanting "Death to America" in the city that is known as the Jihad Capital of America, Dearborn. Um, <laughs> Mean, is, that, is that on their, mm, like, sign when you pull in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dearborn, Michigan, the jihad capital of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, by the way, U.S. is on high alert and actively preparing for a significant attack that could come as soon as this week by Iran targeting Israeli or American assets uh, in the region uh, of, uh, of uh, Syria. So we might get hit over there, but who knows? We've got the protesters there sh shouting, you know, death to America. Um, you know, but they're not, that's not really terrorists. They're just speaking their mind. Uh, some, of, some would say that's maybe mis- or disinformation, maybe even malinformation, uh, but uh, not our government. I'll tell you that right now. Instead, President Joe Biden is, is trying to garner the votes of those people. He is reaching out to Michigan and uh, Jihad City, and he is wanting the Muslim vote. Now, I will tell you, not all Muslims, you know, want Jihad. Some of them came over here and went, hey, you know, I kind of like the idea that, you know, we're not going to be killed if we disagree. Yeah, well, things are changing in America. So uh, Joe Biden is doing everything he can to cater to this vote, to the people who are against Israel and for the Palestinians. And I just want to say that would leave out then people from Jordan, people from Egypt, uh, and, um, and, and people from uh, Syria, anywhere in that region, because None of them want the Palestinians. None of them. None of them will do anything except condemn Israel and the United States. So they're not, they're not there helping at all. Why? Because the Palestinians are a revolutionary people when it comes to their leadership, always a revolutionary people. And, uh, and they've, they've experienced it firsthand, both in Egypt and in Jordan. So everybody's like, yeah, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. Let Israel, let them just be the revolutionaries in Israel, and we can all say we support them, uh, even though they really don't. But Joe Biden 
is catering to those people to the point that he is preparing to force Jewish-made products from Judea and Samaria to be clearly labeled so consumers know where the products are from. What? Mm -hmm. That can't be real, really. It, It is. Report said the move from the administration would reverse a policy enacted by President Donald Trump that required um, a, a goods made in Judea and Samaria as to be labeled as made in Israel. Biden administration, you know, what do you, what do you think? Hang on. What do you think if we just put like a y- little yellow star on all those products? Oh, you know what I mean? That would be helpful for people. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you can only use those products or if you buy those products, uh, maybe you get striped pajamas. With a little yellow star on it, you know? We hmm. can do that. Interesting approach. Is it too subtle, though? Should we... <laughs> should, is it? Should, what about big block letters that just say, Made by them Jews? Something like that. So people how really about, know. How about, Made by them Jews in Jewland? Ooh. Yeah, I we can do that. We can do that. That's, that's, that's the way to go. Be pretty good. That's the way to go. You know, Joe Biden, I don't know if he's thinking about that. We are actually talking about changing labels to make sure everybody knows that's in Judea. Stu, that, why does that sound so much like Jew just with Dea at the end? Mm. You know, it's weird. It's a real mystery. It is a mystery. So, uh, you know, but this hopefully will help win over that gentleman that was speaking so nicely in front of the death of America crowd. Well, I maybe he it- can win that swing vote. Won't that be so worth it? You know, abandoning Israel and uh, uh, labeling all the Jews, but you might get that Dearborn, Michigan vote. Maybe you'll get Rashida to leave to support you again. And what an honorable pursuit that would be. We are actually on the side of evil now. We are on Who's we? The, the country. The country's leadership. Yeah. The United States of America as an endorsing, you know, factor, a big stamp, not the people per se, but we are actually fighting for the side of his, uh, of, of uh, evil. Now we are, w- when you can't see in a nation that, you know, many people in Washington might remember something called nine 11. When you have somebody on the streets chanting death to America, death to Israel, quoting the Ayatollah Khomeini in Iraq, I'm sorry, in Iran, who we are worried is going to attack us this week. When that happens and you have the government coming out and condemning Israel and trying to get the vote of those people who are on the streets condemning America, we're on the side of evil. We are on the side of evil. And, you know, God bless it. If, if that's what the people want, that's exactly what the people will get. It's not what, it's not what God's people want, quite honestly. If, and, and you listen to the coverage of it. It's as if, first of all, and we were six months away from October 7th, six months and a day. Six months. It and, took the world six months. Month. And it didn't take the world six months. That took the world like six weeks tops. But I mean, it, you know, the, the the administration who initially came out and, you know, Biden doing his old school Democratic calculus, which there were some, you know, there's some supporters in the Democratic Party of Israel. I don't know if there's any left, but they, that you know, Chuck Schumer is a great example of this, right? Like he used to be a guy who would at least come out and, and, and say things about Israel uh, seems to be gone now. Mm-hmm. Entirely from the party, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. They're just it's incredible. I mean, even Hillary Clinton. Go back and listen to Hillary Clinton a few you know weeks after she was on. I think the View, which is I mean, is that's not the worst collection of people with Hillary Clinton as guest. That could be like the it's like a a wormhole. Uh, but a she, bad people. A bad people. But uh, I mean, I think she even you know, ex- Nuremberg might have been a bigger okay, collection. Okay, but, yeah, yeah, there's an argument. You know. um, but yeah, th- <laughs> but I think there's a. Uh, <laughs> Not helpful. Uh, You go back and listen to even her explanation Uh uh, of this situation. Hey, you guys don't understand the history of this. Let me lay it out for you. 
She even encapsulated what has happened, and they just all have decided to ignore it now. They, you know, like the guy who's running uh, the World Central Kitchen. Look, and I get it. Like he's first of all a lefty, second of all in the middle of uh, you know a, a ridiculously tragic situation where a bunch of his workers are killed. It's hard to even. And I don't know that we should be listening to him for any. He's a chef, so I don't. I don't know. If there's any reason why we would listen to his political opinions anyway. But like, he's completely accusing Israel of killing these aid workers intentionally. Like, wh- why on earth would they do such a thing? Just for, for even if they were evil and their whole goal was to uh, to to rule the world with their Jewish evil, why on earth would they kill aid workers intentionally? It worked. It would work against their interests in every way. But, like, because Jews are just comic book evil, we're supposed to believe this nonsense. I, I, it is, it's incredible. It's, it's so absurd. And if, and I, I, thankfully I have not seen all of the footage, and I, I'm going to uh, avoid it, if at all possible, are of you? what happened on October 7th. We talked about this off the air, and I made the decision we're... I don't want to see it. I, get, I understand what it is. I've read a lot about it. I understand it. You have talked about potentially seeing it. Yeah, I, I'm going to see it. I think in a couple of weeks. And I, um, I the, don't think that's a bad. Th- I mean, I think that's a good thing it, for you to do. I, don't, I think it's. I, don't want I think it it's been. I, I'm not sure, but I think it's been offered to many people here at the Blaze. I asked for a briefing. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see. I want to see the details. I want to know what Israel knows. Okay, um, and so it's a very high security thing. Yep. Um, and uh, and so I've asked for it, and I think selected people here at the Blaze are going to be able to see it as well. And I I, I think you should see it, Stu. I, uh, I understand what happened, and I don't yeah. need to see it to understand it. I think if you're on the fence and you don't understand it, you should definitely see it. Um, but uh, I, I talked to Dave Marcus, who uh, I'm going to be on with Megan Kelly, by the way, today with Dave. Um, he uh, he saw it, and he his summary of it after walking out of it, after watching the footage, he said, if this happened in the United States, there would be a million people dead somewhere. That's how serious it was. And I don't doubt it. I, I, th- th- he said, and I think this is accurate. Israel's shown restraint here. This is not, Israel does, could be doing a lot more than they're doing. And I feel like the media would think that that is the most insane thing in the world to say. And I don't care if they think that. I, I, th- the fact that they have eliminated or captured something like 60 or 70 percent of what they believe is Hamas. And, and we're asking them to just leave the other 30 percent hanging out. No. Which, by the way, has still not returned the hostages. Right. Won't even let the um, Red Cross in to see the hostages or talk to them. No. Uh, they have yeah. when no. when does Hamas no. get asked about a ceasefire? They don't. It's just supposed to be Israel doing it, and Hamas is able to do whatever they want. Well, forget. I'm sorry. We would everybody calling this show if this happened in the, in America would be asking for what Israel is doing and more.